And then we're going to use RCS build aid, and that's going to help us balance this. Scanner halted. Minimus, whoa, whoa, what, 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 what? Sir Isaac Newton is the pilot for me, <laughs> and he's more predictable than I am. Sorry, Bill, you're being tooted out for someone who is paying for the privilege of being there. Hello, my name is Mike Gaben, and welcome to Season 1 of my KSP campaign, the goal of which is to establish a permanent Kerbal presence in space. And this is going to be an episode where actually we're going to make a significant jump in that direction towards that goal. But right now, you can see that we are around Minmus. This is my Minmus mapper, and it is rapidly approaching its closest approach to Minmus. And it's at that point we're going to need to perform a circ or a capture burn. We're not going to be circularizing just yet, just capturing. And performing that burn is going to be my X-Man KOS script, which is my maneuver node executor. And you can see it's all over it. So waiting for, there we go, three, two, one, and boom, we're off. And again, we're shooting for an apoapsis of about 250 kilometers. There's no urgency to it. 250 kilometers being my target altitude for my eventual polar circular orbit. This time, I'm around Minmus and doing a burn in a rational direction. <laughs> Not burning straight down towards the planet. Not bad. Happy with that, okay. Uh, so, program has now ended. Now, of course, what we need to do is come up here and do a burn at Apoapsis. That will, I'm assuming this is not still messed up. Whoops. That will circularize. But I do think I am going to uh, put in, get another n mod for dealing with maneuver node. This is much better than it was in stock. There's certainly no doubt about that. But I think there is better out there. But we're closing in on this. All right, so what's coming up this episode? This episode, actually, we're going to be designing and building a number of new crewed orbiters, culminating with putting our first tourist into space. Yes, we're getting so comfortable with putting Kerbals into space, we're starting to let civilians go up there. And that's what this episode is going to be concluding with. What you'll also notice in this episode, because it's gonna be a lot of new vessels and new lifters to go along with them, thanks to Kerbal construction time, it's gonna take quite a bit of time to build these things. So uh, watch those day stamps jump forward. Okay, two, that's, that's beautiful. Okay, we're gonna go with that. So that burn is in an hour and 42 minutes, which gives us plenty of time to get to Lieutenant Dang in the Onion 3. You may recall that we concluded last episode right after Lieutenant Dan had performed our first docking of this series, docking with the Kurgina target vehicle and now it's time to get him back down to the surface so I'm just time warping to uh, where I want to do my deorbit burn and I'm gonna actually use the Kurgina to perform my deorbit burn so I gotta be a little careful here let's see I also use the fuel in this and then we'll take this thing down with us uh, let's control from here there we go, and we will put you onto the retrograde vector. And I just want to visually inspect, does that feel like, yeah, I'm going the right way. <laughs> that definitely feels like I'm burning backwards good. All right, and we will burn. Why am I not getting 
a trajectories prediction. Where's trajectories? Trajectories. I, t I turned it off at some point, didn't I? I believe I did. Why would I do such a thing? Well, I remember why I did it. But <laughs> oh, how do you turn you on? Show trajectory. There we go. Okay. Now, this is completely predicting inaccurately right now because I am going to be shedding most of the mass on this. Um, and it's just going to be the pod, and that's way lighter, and it'll slow down more quickly. I'm going to go with this. I think we'll end up... Oh, we'll see where we end up. <laughs> so, let's, now that we've done that, control again from here. We will put you again onto the normal vector. And I've just realized how much I messed up that materials bay. Or not the materials bay, this goo container that's here. I had meant for that to be collecting goo on the way up. And then I thought, oh yeah, because I already got low space goo. And then I thought, oh well, I'll just collect it on the way down. But of course on the way down, we're going to be ditching the service module. So that's going to be useless. So yeah. All right, let's ditch this. So uh, undock. So that can deorbit. Signal lost with the Kragene. Oh, no, relaxed. We're back. Okay. And what did that do for our prediction? Prediction's not too different. I still think we're going to come short of this. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Okay. So hopefully that will be a good distance away from us by the time we enter into the atmosphere. Boy, things are running really slow right now, and I don't know why. I don't have a lot of parts going on. There's something slowing down the game. Okay, so let's ditch the service module. No, try again. Ditch the service module. There we go. Okay, and now I have no control on this at all. There's no uh, SAS or anything. I do have, I guess, retro thrusters <laughs> if I wanted to use them, though I think that might be dangerous to try and use them. Now we are just a big tumbling ball. How did Lieutenant Dang do? Lieutenant Dang is all zeros, and zeros are good. So no radiation issues. That's good. Even though we're in a 100 kilometer orbit. So I really got to get in and start experimenting with how high can I get before we start getting into the radiation belt. Because at some point, hopefully in the not too distant future, we're going to be thinking about space stations. And I need to pick myself a good orbit for a future space station once I have something that's up there permanently because that of course is the name of the game in this season permanent presence okay we are long overshooting the Kerbal Space Center <laughs> so maybe I should have listened to traject we are coming a little bit short I think the target was around here before now it's around here but that gives me a good idea of how much we're not gonna be too far from the Kerbal Space Center that's all right and there we go there's our parachutes fully deployed and of course the rest of this is going to be easy so why don't we cut back to the space center oh we got uh, 59 science Should go take a look at what we got here 59 science um I'm thinking all these are 90 but are all those yeah I think all those are 90 but down here, this is something I was just complaining about, uh, is gizmos. But under gizmos, I do have uh, these illuminator lights, the stock ones. A relay antenna. That's a neat... I can start building some relay. Oh, better, better batteries, fuel cells. 
deployable solar panels, yeah. And, and then after that, in the electrics, I finally get these little... These are from, uh, these are called, a mod called Aviation Lights, and you get all kinds of blinky and colored lights. I, I like blinky colored lights. So why don't we do that? 45 science, it's just going to take a few days to research. And let's see, we got Minmus 1 being rolled out on the pad. Minmus always probably take care of this maneuver first. Actually, there's something else I wanted to take a look at really quickly. Let's get into the vehicle assembly building. Oh, I need to build something. There's something else too. Okay, I'm going to modify the P1. Oh, I can also see I want to... Yeah, so let's edit the P1. And this has to do with... The Kerbal Inventories. This isn't something I've been using a lot. One of these seats will be Bill and one of these seats will be whoever my pilot will be. Definitely Bill's going on this mission. I'm not sure who the pilot will be. But one of the things that I believe I need here, yes there we are, is a wrench. Uh, this is from Kerbal Attachment System. And in order for them to fix things, they need a wrench. Specifically, your engineer needs a wrench, but you know what? I'll give them each a wrench. It's not... It's two kilograms. That's a pretty hefty wrench. <laughs> what also I like here... This is pretty nice. I, I think this is cool. I wish other mods kind of did this kind of thing. This is the manual for using KIS. You know, why don't we put that in there, too? I'll just put one of those. That's just a kilogram. Um, and then the Kerbals can read the manual. We'll show you how that works when we get to it. Okay, uh, that probably didn't really add anything, so we'll just save those edits. Ooh, advanced piling. I don't have a contract attached to that. And kicking off your tourism. Definitely need to do either, both of those. Let's do the easy one first, which is kicking off your tourism. I think, not that we're going to be able to do this, but getting a ship. You have to have at least one pilot and you have to have a passenger. This is my only two crewed vessel, the P1. Uh, this thing has a pretty mammoth booster on it because it's going into a polar orbit. So I'm going to chuck that booster away or maybe just put it to the side because we're going to do some definite modifications to it. Um, one thing, we're going to call this the 1B because one thing that I noticed right away is that uh, this thing, although I put a docking port on it... Oh, I did not put a docking port on it! Well, I thought about putting a docking port on it. <laughs> Let's put a docking port on it. How did I not end up putting... I don't know, whatever. Let's put a docking port on it. So we're going to put a docking port on it. There is no docking port in there? That is so... Somehow I ended up removing it, I think, by mistake. That's okay. So now there's a docking port on there. And uh, what I want to do is put some mono propellant on here so that it can do some maneuvering. Now it just needs hardly any. I think tucking it in here would be for the best. Uh, if I get into here and just do... Here, let's go by resources. Uh, why are these all just generic icons? I want mo mono propellant. There it is. Okay. What is my smallest monopropellant guy? That one is the Stratus 5 Miniature. Are these two the same? Sure look the same. That appears to be my smallest one because I don't think I, I'm not going to need much. It's just for maneuvering thrusters. So we will just tuck this right in here. Probably give two just for balance. That works. And it's only 40 with the two of them. That's 80 kilograms. So how much monopropellant does that give me? Down here somewhere. Mono. Oh my god, there's so many things I'm losing. It's, okay, 15 units of monopropellant. That, sh that should be fine. Let's get some thruster blocks on here. There. And then we're going to use RCS Build Aid. And that's going to help us balance this. Now, to be quite frank here, let's actually remove the fairing. 
because this will be without a fairing once it's all. There's where our center of mass is. You like to have these thruster blocks. Dude, it's really in a very... Okay, we'll go up to here. Can I stick them on there? Not really. If they're on here, does it look funny? Oh, sure does. Might have to go with four just because they're on... Put one right outside that window. How does that look? I think that's tolerable. That's three. Let's put three down here. And let's get that building. What I'm look what I'm really interested in is some sort of oh wait, 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 wait. Bomb bomb. There we go. Starboard translation, that's the one. Okay, that's one of the ones. So, uh, and what I'm really looking at here is torque. I would like that torque to be as close to zero as I can. Now, I think if I pull these downwards, do they get worse or better for torque? It gets worse, but there's only so far up I'm gonna be able to go. Let's actually put this one here so it's a little more balanced. Oh, hang on. No. So the way in which we're going to balance this, still got a little bit of torque, is we're going to take these ones down here on the bottom. It would be nice to move them up, but they start to get in the way of... They can't get them into there. So we're going to start to just bring this down. Get our torque down as low as it will go. Oh. To be honest, I don't need to be this picky with it. I saw, yeah, I think that's probably pretty good. Uh, I don't need to be this picky because the reaction wheels in the vessel actually do a really good job of of holding um, holding attitude, but I don't know. It's kind of nice to get it as low as you can so it doesn't induce your torque. Port torque's the same. Dorsal. Ventral's even lower. Forward is... How can it be... Oh no, zero torque, but yeah, I got thrust forward. Okay, so what we're going to do... I think this should be enough for maneuvering. You know what? Let's just leave it. I'm sure it's fine. I was going to test it, but I don't think I need to test it. I'm going to turn off RCS build aid. Uh, still have 435 meters per second in the vehicle, not counting the abort system, which I shouldn't count. Um, I think that's good. So now this thing has the ability to dock, and that is good. All right, so, and our mass is now up to about 3.6 tons. And let's see if we can get this into an equatorial orbit. So this big-ass booster isn't really necessary. So I put together a new booster for this. Uh, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time. You're actually going to see this thing fly towards the end of this episode. We'll talk about things more detailed then. But the core stage is being pushed by a Reliant liquid fuel engine. And then as you can see here, I've got it surrounded by four thumper SRBs. Yes, the familiar stock Thumper SRB, which for most people is a pretty early unlock, but thanks to Uncurbled Start. Oh, this is almost feeling like a early mid-game booster for me. <laughs> but either way, I uh, ended up with this nice booster, so of course I'm going to save it and add it to my roster of other boosters. This booster can lift into low carbon orbit 3.5 tons. And that's nice. So that, that gives me a little bit, sort of split the difference between I got a 2.1 ton lifter and then a 3.5 ton lifter and then a 5.1 ton lifter. I can definitely go bigger than that, but that's enough for now. Let's get out of here and back to our Minmus mapper. Yeah, whatever. What's our final orbit here? Oh, darn close to 250 by 250, so we're going to call that, close that, SAS on, straighten this out. It's a pretty good look for the solar panels, I think. And we shall start our scan here. It is now doing a low-res altimetry scan. Not sure why some stuff is not scanner halted. 
Minimus, whoa, whoa, what, 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 am I out of electricity or something? I didn't read that whole thing. No, electric charge is fine. Oh, is it because my data is all full? I think it might be. I am out of memory. Can we start transmitting then? Like, what the heck? Something's up with this one. That is very strange. Why, why when I turn this one on, does the transmitting stop? Okay, we're going to close that. Yeah, let's delete that, because we're going to be over highlands and junk again. Now all of a sudden I got, I don't know, let's try starting the scanner again. Watch this. So it's not an issue with electricity. But I think our transmission rate is so slow. Well, no, it seems to be doing all right now. We'll keep an eye. We'll, we'll pop out here, keep an eye on it. It seems to be doing the mapping now. It's going, it's, I should have put more antennas on here, I think is really what the issue is. It's only got the one communitron. But we'll see. Should be alright. I'm not 100% sure what just happened there, but uh, let's get ourselves back to the Kerbal Space Center and send something else out to Minmus. With a nice sunset launch. You don't see sunset launches. I think the sun has just gone down, so we're going to end up be going into the dark, unfortunately. But uh, it was the way it worked out because of having to, again, Launch at, I'm actually launching at the descending node with Mimis's orbit. And oh, I think the sun's going to peak up over the mountains, at least temporarily. So that will launch into an inclined orbit, and the plane of our orbit will match as Mimis's orbit, which makes our transfer out to Minmis easier. And you might recall that, well, this is the Minmis 1B. There was a Minmis 1 that uh, I managed to. Uh, well, crash into the planet, didn't I? <laughs> Through my own orbital mechanical ineptitude, I, I actually hit Minmus when I meant to fly by. Let's actually talk about what the Minmus or the mission is supposed to be here. Yeah, I still got it called Minmus One. While this thing's doing the ascent, we're supposed to fly by Minmus and then continue on and fly by the sun, or not fly by the sun, but then end up in an orbit about the sun and. The less I say about how I messed up my encounter with Minmus, the better. Let's just say this time we're going to do our best to uh, do it right. Alright, 80 by 80. That on a normal vector. For the sun, though, the sun just went away. <laughs> Let's set up our encounter with Minmus. Now, this is where I messed this up before is I prefer I got my encounter with Minmus and then uh, I uh... now one thing I did add yes I did I got so frustrated with the stock maneuver node editor that all I I ended up putting this on this is maneuver node evolved um, by D magic one of the mods I remember who the person was who made it. <laughs> it's just it's a nice simple little interface. Um, but I, I'm I don't know, I started getting a little bit annoyed with Could give myself some extra delta V. Normally getting to Minmus is about 920. I'm gonna give myself about 950 because I wanna blow by Minmus and get out towards the sun. It'd be 940. Oops. There we go. And let's adjust the timing of this a little bit. So one window, one window here is for adjusting timing, and the other one's for adjusting the magnitude of the burn. So let's get ourselves our encounter. And the thing to do is, and what I did wrong last time is, I didn't. I should be doing this entire burn, getting everything set up in this one single burn that will get me going by Mimis. And uh, ejecting past Minmus and going out towards the sun. So we're going to do this all at once. Now I'm noticing I'm already going past. So I can bring down my 
a little bit here. I got to make sure I'm always going to be ejecting past the sun. Bring a little bit more off. Okay, let's get in closer here. I really don't care about inclination and all this kind of stuff. I just want to get in close to Minmus and still be able to leave. Yep. Can take a little bit more off of here, a couple more meters per second. Probably going to get entirely too picky with this, which is per usual for me. Okay, now is that still leaving the sphere of influence? It sure is. Okay, I, I think this is good. Let's get this in close. We're just going to get this close by... Oh, that's a little too close, so. That's pretty good. So we're going to buzz by Minmus like that. I'm not even going to do a normal correction on the way out there. I don't care. We're going to leave Minmus. We're going to be leaving the sun in about, or orbiting the sun in about 11 days. Okay, let's perform the burn. So this should be the only burn we need to do. Um, I do have my maneuver execution program, however, this burn is going to span over two stages, because we're going to use up the last of this upper, upper stage of the booster, and I've yet to adjust my maneuver, I, I, I keep wanting to do that, I want to modify that script so that it can handle, uh, Staging events in the middle of a burn. I've yet to get to that. <laughs> but on my to-do list. Okay. All right. We'll be losing that stage in just a moment. Bam. And then the much lower thrust to weight ratio of that ant engine. That's okay. We don't need the thrust to weight. Okay, we'll just watch our periapsis. I want to come in close, but clearly don't want to hit this time. Nice. Leave it right there. Beautiful. So we're going to come in, buzz in there, get almost to 11 kilometers above the surface. And 11 days, almost 12 days from now, we'll be leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence and orbiting the sun, which will do the second part of this contract. No further burns required. I wish I was a little more on the ball last time, um, but I wasn't. <laughs> okay, uh, what do we got coming up next? Oh, the materials bay grabber, just about there. Okay, we'll do that. Oh, and then I should push something else into the vehicle assembly building. Ah, I see something ironic happening, that the P-1B is going to be finished before the P-1 is finished. Even though the P-1B is based upon the P-1, because the P-1 has a much bigger booster, it's just taking more time. Okay, materials bay grabber. This is simply to ga grab a couple of materials bays. It's not biome specific. Uh, you saw me playing with this a little bit a couple of episodes ago. You can see it takes a lot of electricity to run the materials bay with Kerbalism. So you can see I got great big solar panels on here. I'm going to drive her towards the shore, start the materials bay, and then uh, we'll use these separatrons to launch it into the water. We'll do a splashdown and do another materials bay. Oh, hang on, that's not going to work. I just realized that. I thought I could do two materials bay. I learned this from my mission last episode with... Uh, that actually the materials bay takes up multiple slots. The materials bay has four slots, but it uses up all four of those when doing a single materials based study. So um, I don't think I'm going to have the option. That's far enough from the launch pad. The brakes on. It's going to use up all four slots when I do a materials base. So materials bay go. There it is. Again, this materials bay is from the restock mod, or restock plus, I think, because it adds this nice 
uh, radial materials bay, which I really like. It's the same on the inside, though. Just that allows you to attach it radially. This, sh I should be, yes, it's not using up electric charge because this is generating more electric charge than what's being used up, but I got a feeling that um, I won't be able to do another materials bay when this is done, but that's okay. We'll push another one into the building queue, and that one will fire off into the into the ocean for the splashdown. Needless to say, this is a pretty cheap vehicle. And while that was being built, our Minmus 1B was doing its flyby. Wow. Oh, oh, now we are collecting some science. So we're doing some telemetry report. That's because we didn't spend a lot of time in Lowe's science about Minmus before we ended up, uh, well, crashing into it, didn't we? <laughs> and I'm using the Royal We Clearly, it was me. This time, though, there's nothing for me to do to mess this up. Sir Isaac Newton is the pilot for me, <laughs> and he, he's more predictable than I am. We're already, now that we've passed Minmus, we are already now the furthest object out from Kerbin yet. Bye-bye, Minmus. Okay, so we got a telemetry report, space low, which will just transmit away in the background. The next leg of this journey being us exiting Kerbin's sphere of influence, but that won't be for another seven days. This is a massive time jump episode. I'm sure people are noticing that. We are really jumping ahead in time because of how long it's taking to build some of these things. Then I gotta think about something else to build for the VAB. I'm thinking about maybe building a version of the P that's just for science. I don't know. We'll see. Or maybe, uh build something to head out towards the moon. <gasps> There's a thought. Want to go to the moon, folks? I'd love to go to the moon. All right, and materials bay. Let's think about going to the moon. That's what I think I should do. I got a contract to orbit the moon. Let's look into that. And I'm sorry, but this time I'm just giving you the barest of glimpses at this thing. It is once again built around the P capsule, and you will for sure be seeing this in a future episode. Suffice to say, for now, it is designed to carry two Kerbals and put them into an orbit about the moon and hopefully collect a crap ton of science for me. But it is a new orbiter, orbiter design and a new booster design once again, so it's gonna take a while for Kerbal construction time to crank this one out. I know it's taking a long time to build everything, but if we take a look at the VAB, every one of these are orbiters, crewed orbiters built around that two crewed P capsule. So, uh, yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming up. We're only three days away from the P1, or the P1B. That is our tourist contract. Uh, and, yeah, let's... This is getting exciting. Kerbals in space! There we are. We're now pointing straight away from Kerbin. So, there it is! <laughs> I probably s swiveled right by it. There we go. So, there's Kerbin! Looking teeny weeny itty bitty. All right, let's bring up our contract. All we have to do is orbit in the sun. We also got some science to collect out there too, so that will be exciting. Okay. And whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's track of what we're doing here. And boom, we are now orbiting the sun. Look at that. <laughs> okay, and our signal strength is still okay, but we're going to be drifting further and further away from Kerbin, and at some point we're going to lose signal because all we have is a couple of communitrons on this thing, but we should be collecting lots and lots of science. We have a telemetry report, a science report. Wait a minute. Did I never have this thing on? Oh my gosh, I didn't have my Geiger counter on. We went by Minmus with that. Do I have other science? My thermometer. Oh! 
What a doofus. So I had science that I didn't have on as we flew by Minmus. I didn't notice I had a thermometer and a Geiger counter. Because I build these things and I forget what it is that I've done. And it's so dumb because you can queue all the experiments in the VAB when you design the thing and they'll only come on when there's science for them to collect. So all I gotta do is put them on automatic and every once in a while I'm still forgetting to do that. Oh well, we'll be back to Minmus. Uh, this thing's gonna be collecting lots and lots of science, clearly, but so far this episode it's been nothing but probes and I promised you Kerbals. Well, here come some Kerbals. All right, and our contract for the P-1B is to kick off our space tourism contract. We gotta have at least we gotta have a pilot, and we gotta have Tito Kerman aboard. So we're going to launch our pilot. Let's get Jeb out of there because I'm pretty sure I have a pilot that's still not level one. Yes, Colonel Valley Kerman is still not level one. Oh, and Verbri Kerman. We have yet to see Verbri Kerman do a mission, so why don't we do Verbri? So, yeah, Verbri Kerman, you're aboard. And, sorry, Bill, you're being tooted out for someone who is paying for the privilege of being there. Tito Kerman. Okay, let's launch. We are lifting off the pad. The initial thrust to weight ratio is a smidge on the low side. I'll be the first to admit that, but uh, it seems to get the job done. It's running just on two of these thumpers, and then it's going to lose those two and pick up the next two. And uh, yeah, this for this booster, the uh, orbiter, which we'll see in just a little bit, is really right at the top end of what it can lift. It's about 3.1 tons, this booster. So we do have the 5.1 ton booster coming up, but I think that is going to be next episode. Okay, staging. There we go. Separatron's pushing those away in a nice controlled way. I'm just noticing Tito looks just like Bill. That's our life with limited. <laughs> And this is our first launch of two Kerbals going into space at the same time. Fortunately, one of them is a tourist. Well, I don't know if that's unfortunate. <laughs> it is what it is, I suppose. This is really the first, what I'm going to call my third generation of boosters. I mean, we started off with those 0.625 meter boosters that came from with unkerbled start. We then got into the 1.25 meter hammer based boosters, and now we got these guys. I tell you that unlocking those bigger engines, things like the Reliant, things like these Thumper SRBs, this is opening up a whole new world for me. I'm thinking about, you know, I'm putting Kerbals into polar orbits. I'm sending, I got a mission laid out to be sending Kerbals into orbit about the moon. I'm able to lift all these kinds of things. Once I get the hitchhiker can, you know, well, you know, space stations won't be far behind after that. All right, now down to just the central core, being pushed up by that single Reliant. I love the Reliant engine as a 1.25 meter lifter engine. I think it's my favorite one. And actually, if we take a look at it, is the Reliant, right? Yes, it is. The Reliant engine is, I'm, it's too bad we're getting all of this extra stuff. You know, the heating effects. Let's aim the camera right here. Because the restock mod does do, it adds on, look at, I love the little exhaust. You know, uh, oh, I'm not enough of a rocket engineer to say. <laughs> what, what's this called? Oh, we just hit our target apoapsis. It's the pre-burner exhaust. There we go. And look at all of this tubing up in here. Really makes that engine just look wonderful. Anyway. To reset the camera. Reset camera. There we go. Okay. Once at 60 kilometers, we'll be losing the fairing. We should be deploying deployables. Deploying deployables. There we 
are. And there goes that, including the antenna. Nice, nice, nice. Put lights on, programs in. I now do have uh, the stock lights, so I'll be able to light these things, start lighting these things up a little bit better than they are right now. Unfortunately, this thing was in the building queue at the time I unlocked lights, so you won't be seeing it on this. And for some reason, I do have this thing also has maneuvering thrusters and a docking port in case in the future. This might be a very good uh, vehicle for in a future space station for ferrying Kerbals up and down. But for now, it's hauling a tourist. Burberry's doing a fine job on Tito. Looks like he's having a good time. And once this is done, Kirby will become my fourth level one pilot. I really got to start getting Phil and Bob up here too. Bill's scheduled to go on the next one, which will be next episode. All right, there we go. 80 by 80. So separate off the booster. Again, we'll switch back to the booster because, once again, this booster does have the ability to do a burn back. There's 400 meters per second left. The parachutes are armed. So I'm really hoping... that this actually will slow things down enough so the parrot stage recovery will... It can't enter the atmosphere. I think it's two kilometers. I think if it gets more than two kilometers per second at the time the parachutes or the time it enters the atmosphere, something like that. I'm overshooting a little bit. There's no gimbling on that engine. Saying goodbye to them. Really, just about get myself slower, keep burning. Okay, we'll see if that recovers or not. I have no idea whether it will. We'll find out. Oh, I'm too far away. Ah. Uh, switch to the P. There we are. All right. Why don't we talk about the vessel here? Let's see. Ah, uh, very similar to um the uh, onion vessels that you've seen. I've crammed in quite a bit more stuff. This actually can... I think these guys had like something like a month worth of supplies if I'm not mistaken here. Let's just check this out. Yeah, we got 53 days, 54 days of oxygen, 50, almost 57 days of... of sorry, 57, 47 days of oxygen. I can do this. 54 days almost of water and almost 59 days worth of food so they could stay up here for quite some time though it is going to be just for a few hours uh it is powered by i know before i used monoprop i've given up i'm not given up but this one now that we're doing a little bit more um using the pug engine nice little 1.25 meter little vacuum engine uh, what is the delta V on this thing? I think I made it reasonable. Yeah, it has 435 meters per second of delta V, which means it has the ability to get up into high orbit, has the ability to easily rendezvous with any future space stations, which honestly is probably, I can see in the future, going to be its primary purpose, is simply rendezvousing with space stations. It has a probe core, so it can fly autonomously. It doesn't have to have a pilot, but it does, and as you can see, Maneuvering thrusters and a docking port allows it to dock with other vessels, though this particular one will not be doing so. So anyway, we'll leave these folks up here for a little while longer, but uh, I think it's going to be next episode when we'll bring them down. Yeah, I've got a lot of things going on with next episode. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more Kerbals in space. Well, it is called Kerbal Space Program, so it is about time. But in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.